Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on last Sunday formally handed over the presidency of G20, now probably G21, to Brazil President Lula da Silva at the closing ceremony of the summit in New Delhi's Bharat Mandapam. United Nations Security Council needs new developing countries as permanent, non-permanent members to regain political strength, President Lula said at the closing ceremony. During the two-day G20 summit in Delhi, the African Union was inducted into the group as a new permanent member. A memorandum of understanding was signed for the India-Middle East-Europe Economic Corridor while the Delhi Declaration was adapted that called on nations to uphold international law. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the launch of Global Biofuel Alliance to encourage usage of cleaner fuels. The India-Middle East-European Economic Corridor was jointly announced by US, India, Saudi Arabia, UAE, France, Germany, Italy and European Union amid the G20 summit. It will have an East and North corridor connecting India to Middle East and Middle East to Europe. It involves building a rail route, laying energy and digital connectivity cable, a pipeline for a clean hydrogen export, etc. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar has shared five key outcomes of the G20 summit. The key outcomes include Green Development Pact, Action Plan on the Sustainable Development Goals, High Level Principles on Anti-Corruption, Support for the Digital Public Infrastructure and Reform of Multilateral Development Banks. The G20 membership of an African Union was a major achievement. The Border Road Organization BRO on last Sunday said it will be building the world's highest fighter jet airfield at Nioma in Ladakh. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will lay the foundation stone of the airfield, which will be constructed at 218 crore cost on September 12th. This airfield will tremendously boost the air infrastructure in Ladakh, as per the official. President Draupadi Murmu inaugurated the National E-Vidhan application NEVA project of the Gujarat State Assembly today. National E-Vidhan application project has been implemented on the One Nation, One Application concept of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The project is being launched with the aim to make the Assembly digital and promote the active participation of MLAs in various technology-based operations through tablets. She virtually launched the Ayushman Bhav national campaign of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare from Raj Bhavan in Gandhinagar. This historic campaign will be launched to ensure the saturation coverage of healthcare schemes in every town and villages of the country. An Indian Air Force IL-78 aircraft tanker refueled MiG-29M and Rafale fighter aircrafts of the Egyptian Air Force mid-air as part of the Bright Star Exercise 2023. Its video was also released on social media. Notably, this is Indian Air Force's first time participating in the Bright Star 23 exercise. The objective of this exercise is to practice planning and execution of joint operations. India's first manned submersible Matsya 6000, capable of taking three personnel to 6,000 meters underwater is being prepared for deep sea exploration missions. The spherical vessel has 2.1 meter diameter and an endurance of 12 hours under normal operation. It's built from an 80 mm thick titanium alloy, enabling it to withstand extreme pressures underwater. India's first manned deep ocean mission, Samudrayan, plans to send three humans to 6 kilometers ocean depth to study the deep sea resources and biodiversity assessment. Indian Air Force Chief, Air Chief Marshal B. R. Chaudhary received the keys of C-295 transport aircraft from manufacturer Airbus in Spain on Wednesday this week. 
This kick-started the delivery of 16 aircraft in flyaway condition by 2025 under the 21,935 crore project, which was signed two years ago. The first aircraft will be officially handed and inducted into the India later this month. Apple recently launched iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max and will support India's indigenously built GPS Navic navigation with Indian Constellation, which has been created by ISRO. This is the first time that iPhone models will support the India-made technology. The navigation system provides accurate position and timing information over India and surrounding regions. Registration of Births and Death Amendment Act 2023 will come into effect from October 1, 2023, making birth certificate the single document that can be used for issuance of Aadhaar card, passports, driving license, etc. It enables people born on or after the Act commences to apply for government jobs and at educational institutions, register marriages, etc. using birth certificates. The Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud, announced that the Supreme Court of India will soon come under the National Judicial Data Grid NJDG, platform, which provides tracking of pendency of cases. The National Judicial Data Grid is a database of orders, judgments and case details of 18,735 districts and subordinate courts and high courts, created as an online platform under the e-courts project. The Chief Justice said, it is a unique platform that is developed by NIC, an in-house team of the Supreme Court. Until now, the platform has been collecting data only up to the level of high courts and now the top courts will be uploading cases to the platform in real time. Britain, France and Germany said that they would retain ballistic missile and nuclear proliferation related sanctions on Iran that were set to expire in October under the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The sanctions bar Iran from developing ballistic missiles capable of delivering nuclear weapons and bar anyone from buying, selling or transferring drones and missiles to and from Iran. They also include the asset freeze of several Iranian individuals and entities involved in the nuclear and ballistic missile program. In a joint statement, the three European allies known as E3 that had helped negotiate the nuclear deal said they would retain their sanctions in a direct response to Iran's consistent and severe non-compliance with the accord. Also known by the official name of Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or JCPOA, Iran has violated the sanctions by developing and testing ballistic missiles and sending drones to Russia for its war on Ukraine. Myanmar Ministry of Immigration and Population has introduced a one-year visa on arrival VOA trial for Indians. Indian tourists can obtain VOA application at Myanmar's international airport free of charge. However, a visa on arrival fee will be applicable along with two photos of the applicant. Applicants must also hold a passport with minimum six months of validity, the ministry said. The Indian Railways will launch the first sleeper version of Vande Bharat train within the current financial year, BG Malia, General Manager of Integral Coach Factory said. We will also be launching the Vande Bharat Metro in financial year, he added. Malia also said a non-AC Vande Bharat train having 22 coaches will be launched before October 31st. Yeshobhumi, one of the world's largest mice, meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibition facility to be inaugurated in Delhi on September 17th. This Yeshobhumi has a seating capacity of over 11,000 delegates and comprises of 15 convention rooms, a grand ballroom with a petal ceiling and 13 meeting rooms. It's built at a cost of Rs 5,400 crores and has a total project area of over 8.9 lakh square meters. Yeshobhumi will be larger than the Bharat Mandapam.
and now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded itself this week back in history 10 september 1608 john smith chosen president of jamestown having survived capture by indians reputedly through the efforts of pochahans a chief daughter john smith became president of jamestown colony the first permanent english settlement in north america this day in 1608 11 september 2001 world trade center and pentagon attacked by terrorists on this day in 2001 19 militants associated with the terrorist group al qaeda hijacked four planes in united states crashing three into buildings the fourth one crashed in pennsylvania and killing some 3000 people 12 September 1764 death of french composer remau french composer of the late baroque period jean philip remau known for his harpist chord music and famous as a composer of operas including the masterpiece pygmalion 1748 died on this day in 1764 13 September 1598 Philip III crowned king of Spain and Portugal King Philip III of Spain Philip II of Portugal crowned on this day in 1598 was virtuous in his private affairs but indifferent as a ruler and extravagant in his spendings exacerbating Spain growing economy problems 14 September 1847 Mexico City captured by US forces. US General Winfield Scott advance on Mexico City was marked by an unbroken series of victories that culminated this day in 1847 when he entered Mexico City and ended the military phase of Mexican-American War. 15 September 1821 Central Americans granted independence. On this day in 1821 Central American notables accepted a plan drafted by Mexican colonialo Agustin de Iturbide that bought independence from Spain to Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras and Nicaragua. 16 September 1620 Mlay Flowers departure for America. On this day in 1620 English colonists aboard the Mayflower set sail for America where they founded Plymouth Massachusetts after 41 men including William Bradford and Miles Standish signed the Mayflower compact Well that's all friends for this week's updates see you soon next Sunday on the same channel till then take care bye bye